okay uh, very good morning to all to this edition of viro the viro global and uh, a few of you who must have seen the x ray are wondering ki what is happening here and a few of you must be wondering what was done so without further ado let's go ahead with the introduction to benign bone tumors uh, so heterogeneous group of lesions very difficult to, to de keep defining in single entity or keep individual tissues the true numbers of these benign bone tumors are not known since many of them are an incidental finding and do not give trouble very rarely they might present with a pain or a swelling and uh, sometimes they were present with a pathological fracture due to weakening of the bone as an orthopedic surgeon it is very important to identify these lesions to be very sure that these are benign and versus whether they are malignant lesions so what how do we go about classifying these so one way is to classify depending on the matrix or the constituent cells one if they are osteoid producing it might be osteoblastoma osteoid ostoma if they are cartilage ones then they are onchondroma chondroblastoma osteochondromas then there are cystic lesions these are the simple bone cysts or the aneurysmal bone cysts then you have got the fibrous ones the fibrous cortical defects fibrous dysplasia non ossifying fibroma or the miscellaneous group which includes the giant cell tumors lipoma or hemangiomas so these are staged uh, according to by anyking so we have got the stage 1 or the latent ones which are incidentally found and they do not progress uh, like this non ossifying fibroma then we have got the stage 2 or the active lesions which like this lesion which will uh, be respectful of the boundaries but they will go on progressing and need some kind of intervention this is a proximal femur aneurysmal bones then there are the aggressive lesions which do not respect the boundaries and breach out and then definitely need an intervention like this proximal fibula giant cell tumor so how do you identify this so you need the radiological features to have a look at these most important is to identify the problematic area to differentiate the benign from the malignant lesions to identify the benign aggressive ones from the ones which are benign latent to rule out their infection or whether they are mimics and very important is to identify the leave alone lesions which just require an observation and most importantly we require radiology for their follow ups so very important uh, diagram we must have seen during our residency training also we have got the epiphyseal lesions like the chondroblastoma or the giant cell tumors then we have got the metaphyseal lesions chondromixoid fibroma aneurysmal bone cysts and chondromas then the diaphyseal lesions fibrocortical defect non ossifying fibroma fibrous dysplasias and the osteoid osteomas as mentioned previously very important to identify the malignant ones versus the benign ones uh, what are the points which help us in identifying other zone of transition a narrow zone of transition versus a wide zone of transition the margins whether it's a very sharp margin sclerotic margin or is it very diffuse then the periosteal reaction are there an aggressive one like the one seen on the left where there's a sunburst appearance hair on end appearance the tumor matrix also helps us in gauging whether it is a malignant one so you might have a cartilaginous lesions or a chondroid lesions then the bone destruction pattern which might be permeative or a moth eaten in a very malignant lesion a few examples an epiphyseal lesion in a growing child very classical of chondroblastoma epiphyseal elderly eccentric giant cell tumor cortical lesions in a tibia spread throughout osteofibrous dysplasias then you have got a femur lesion expansile you can see the scalloping you can see some ring and arc class calcifications and chondromas then a pathological fracture in a lytic lesion showing the fallen fragment sign as well so a unicameral bone cyst then a cortical lesion which on ct shows the nidus so an osteoid osteoma so how do we approach these tumors we go by the history we go by the clinical examination then the imaging x ray and mri helps us to define the area very important in these aggressive lesions we need to classify them get a biopsy done then we manage this according to the histopathology that we get and then a rehab and follow uh as mentioned previously the no touch lesions which are very characteristically uh, identified on radiology itself you have got an osteochondroma you have got an enchondroma 
or a non-ossifying fibroma. These sometimes are incidentally found. Very rarely they might start giving trouble like an osteochondroma which might undergo a malignant transformation in which case they might need a intervention. Otherwise if they are not troubling you can just keep them under observation. So what are the options for management of these lesions? We have got these lesions as mentioned, the no touch lesions where you just observe. Then you have got these lesions, you know, osteoid osteoma in the spine or a chondroblastoma of proximal femur. We have got options like RFA or cryotherapy. You, these two x-rays which show an aneurysmal bone cyst proximal tibia healing very nicely with sclerotherapy or a giant cell tumor which would require a curettage. Now if you are still wondering what was done in this case which was shown earlier, so just recap a bit. This presented in this way, a lytic lesion, distal femur. As you can see on the lateral x-ray, it has breached the anterior cortex, so it comes under the aggressive lesion, a benign aggressive lesion. The surgeon unfortunately did not follow the principles, did not biopsy it. He, he went ahead and did a surgery, a curettage and some bone grafts and artificial bone substitutes and then he sent for an histopath and that was reported as aneurysmal bone cyst. Since it was benign, he said let us observe it and see if it relates. But three months down the line, the we fracture, malunited, the lesion went on increasing. Six months down the line is when he presented to us in this state. So concerned with the increase in size, we got the MRI done, which shows a lesion in the distal femur. And as you can see on the axial scan, there is only a patella which is seen anteriorly and only a part of the condyle which is seen posteriorly. Rest of the distal femur is destroyed. So we went ahead and did a resection for this unfortunately, but the patient is doing well and the final histopath has come as giant cell tumor of the bone with a secondary aneurysmal bone cyst. So just goes to show that if you just follow the steps, we can still go ahead and get a good result in these lesions. Thank you.